Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. This channel is all about indoor home worm farming. So if that is what you're about, you are in the right place. Today we're going to take a deep dive on the wedge system that I run with my 55 gallon worm bin blue. So we are literally going to do a deep dive. I've been doing a massive amount of harvesting to get my garden going this year. So as you can tell, blue's level has dropped significantly. I've probably taken 20 to 30 gallons out of blue. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take everything on this half and we are going to move it over so that it can stack up higher and be in the appropriate area for me to harvest. I did have a couple of questions from people uh, over the course of the last month since we've seen blue and one of them said, this is so dry, that's bad for the worms. Well, on top is, is very, very dry. Like when I move all of that over, that is all very, very dry. But then we get to this part that's right underneath and it is not. And this is a, a decent moisture for the worms. However, what I am doing is drying this portion off with a fan. I actually have a fan going in the room to try and keep this moisture off of here. And that is one of the motivators for getting the worms to go to this end, which is the feeding end. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to do the deep dive. We're gonna do a full fluff here and get all of the stuff that's on the bottom on the top so that it can dry out more to motivate those worms to get out so I can harvest. Um, when I do the harvesting, I do sift everything. So it is imperative for me to have this bin or, or the castings that I'm going to harvest be drier. And then the leftovers that they have not eaten that are above the sieve can go over here. So I am gonna turn up this whole area on this side. Now, if you haven't seen me harvesting things, I'll give you a little quick look. This is my one quarter inch sieve, and I just take handfuls, shake back and forth, give it a bit of a scrub. And this only works, you know, if the worms are gone. You wouldn't want to be this rough with it if the worms were still there. So after the things are left on top, I put them in another bin and get them really wet again so that they are in a condition to be worked upon by the worms and their friends, the bin critters. Okay, but we're not gonna do much more of that right now because today is all about moving the wedge over. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is completely turned over. And for the most part, there are no worms in here. They have already vacated and went to the feeding end of the bin. But I want to make sure that the damp part that's underneath gets mixed with the dry castings so that everything can kind of dry evenly. So when I come in here to harvest, then it's ready for me and it's in a moisture that is appropriate for sifting. So we're going to mound this up all the way over here to make room for the next feeding. So this part here that I'm messing with is really basically done. Very few worms, it's drying out. Anything that I find that's a big chunk, I whip it down there to the other end. So this part will be the area where I will be harvesting from in the future. Now this middle section here still has more worms in it. You can see it has more worms and there are still some identifiable food in this area. So we're still going to do the same thing though because this is going to be the next area that I'm going to try and dry out and get ready to harvest. So this part needs to get completely flipped and it does aggravate the worms. A lot of people ask, they're like, oh my gosh, you're, you're being kind of rough on those little delicate worms. They do manage just fine. Nobody's dying. Um, they're being annoyed, but you know, that's life. So, but because this is getting to the end, this is probably about three or four months old, that's in this area, it's time for it to move on. 
and start drying out and the worms need to go this way so that they can get fresh food. So all the worms that are dilly-dallying over here are going to be inspired not only by me aggravating them, but also by the continuous drying of this area. So I don't do this complete flip, I don't know, maybe once every other month. So they've had many, you know, very long periods of time without being irritated like this and disturbed. This is a, this bin is a mix of red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers. Depending on the season, the population seems to be a little bit heavier in the preferred species. And what I mean by that is in the warm months where it gets to be about 80 Fahrenheit in the basement here, I think that favors the blue worms. So I see more blue worms down here. And then when it gets cold in the basement, like 55, 60 Fahrenheit, I'll put the Celsius below, um, then it will favor the European night crawlers and the red wigglers who do really well. And I think the cocoons from the other species just kind of hang out and wait for the proper, you know, temperature and moisture for their species. And they wait for that. And when it becomes good for them, then they hatch out and uh, then they will become, you know, a higher percentage of the population here. Okay, so we're making quite a bit of room, which is good because I have a big feeding and it is quite honestly gonna be a little weird. If you're new here, you don't know that I have a, a problem because I, I like to grow avocados, even though it's not tropical here but those look like they might want to sprout. So I'm gonna put them over here in the area that's nice and moist. You hear some banging around. Uh, it's recycling day here. So somebody is above my head in the kitchen, dropping the recycling into the recycling bags. All right, so we're getting into the area that was fed probably about a month ago. And there are a lot more worms, a lot, a lot more worms. So as I get to this area, I'm going to move the camera so that you can see this area better. Hang on, let's move over. Okay, so then we're getting into this area here. This was probably fed one month, maybe two months ago. So I'm gonna have a lot of larger particles here and it is most likely gonna be much more wet than down that way, as is designed. This is the way this wedge method works. It gets more food, more moisture at the business end, and it gets drier with less food at the old end. So these guys are doing a good job. There's probably about 20 pounds of the worm mix here in this whole bin. And that is a lot of worms, but they have a large area to hang out in, so I feed them accordingly. If you have a smaller bin than I do, don't feed the amounts that I feed or you will end up with big problems. You know, this is almost six feet long and two feet wide. So this is a large, large area. If any of the food that I feed starts to ferment or go off, the worms have more than enough real estate to move and get away from it until it's ready. I come in here about once a month. And so for me, feeding large amounts makes sense because of the time I have to uh, take care of the worms. It is garden season after all. And right now I'm all about getting the garden ready. I'll probably have a little small video I'm putting in a new raised bed where I'm going to be installing a worm tower in there it's the old worm tower but it's just gonna have a new home but I will put that on as I'm able to do it but in the meantime I will link the garden worm tower at the end of this video okay so we have gone through everything here we're getting to the part where there may or may not be a worm ball but we'll see. Kind of a, a diffused worm ball here. Oop, well, always got our 
or avocado plan. Oh, what did, what did Patrick call this? An avocado. Um, so yeah, there they are nibbling on the inside. Little worm ball, I'm not sure what it is. I'm breaking this here, but they're gonna get a replacement avocado here in today's feeding. But they just love hanging out and being all nice and snugly in the avocado shells. Oh, the pineapple is still here. This takes about six months to break down. But I think they enjoy playing in all the different leaves and all the little nooks and crannies, so that's fine. It's not like the worms have a day job. This is their day job. All right. Still flipping. It's uh, becoming quite muddy now. More. Oh, these are cocoa husk. Um, I don't wear gloves unless I have an injury on my hand, so for those people who don't like to get their nails dirty, um, wearing gloves is totally fine. I choose not to. I have a nail brush, so I figure that's good enough. I think this is one of the plants that didn't make it. Hmm, yeah. So this is good. We're getting everything sorted. Putting all of the large chunks of food that didn't get consumed down to the far end. And then we're gonna make some room for this huge feeding that I have for today. So the, the bin does slope down in this area. So all of the high moisture kind of, you know, it works because it all goes to the end where there is more food as well as uh, more moisture. Wow. A complete explosion of isopods. Check this out. I was not expecting that. I don't think I've ever seen an isopod ball. Is that what we call it? But they are very good at working on the really hard stuff like the avocado pits and stems of plants, etc. So we need them as shredders. So they're doing a good job in here. So yeah, not so much a complete worm ball, just good old high concentration of worms. So I'll put those big chunks back there. And then I will get my bucket of kind of a weird food. I don't think I've ever fed it before, so we'll see how it goes. All those big chunks down there. I don't see any recognizable food from last time. Get those avocado pits down there. I think I have some chicken bones in here that we're seeing how long it takes them to get done. I think they've been in there for about a year. Okay. Still kind of smell the pineapple a little bit. Okay, now let me grab the weird food. So this is my rhubarb plant that I pulled out. It kept going to, to seed every year and I wasn't ever getting decent amounts of stems. So I have the roots here. Ugh, I don't know how long it'll take the the worms to eat those, but we will find out together. But this is mostly stalks, leaves, and uh, stems of that avocado, or avocado, I've got avocado on the brain. I have some ripe avocados on my counter that are waiting for me to have lunch. So I'm just gonna ram all that in there, and then we're gonna cover it up with some uh, fast food from the kitchen, and then we'll see how long it takes to do a rhubarb root, a bunch of rhubarb roots. So yeah, I'm not sure what that plant's problem was, but uh, it had its time to, you know, get fertilized and maybe they just have a expiration date. Rhubarb plants have like a, an age at which they just die and act stupid. Put that in the comments below, cause I've been struggling with this plant for about three years. And finally, this was the year where I was like, this space in the garden could be better used by things that are gonna give me something to eat. All right, let me get the fast food. Okay, those are some limes, some toast, a little bit of onion. Got some mango here. 
and uh, avocado that wasn't ripe when I opened it. So they'll have another avocado shell to play in for this next month. All right, well, if you have any questions on the wedge method or blue or anything like that, please put that in the comments below. And if you would like to watch the entire playlist of blue, I will link that right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.